Hello farmers, welcome back to Solendra, taking our fiat with our roller, and we're going to go over and roll the oat field that we just planted last episode. I thought I was going to do it next month when I planted the uh, sorghum, but the one thing I don't know about a roller, is it like a grass roller? If the crops grow into the first stage and I roll the field, does it delete the crops? I don't know. I can test that when we get to next month, uh, but I also want to see if this roller is going to do a soil field uh, we it will it will do grass but the mod said it'll do both so we're gonna give it a shot here and yep it is doing both you can see it's already rolling it so that should give us a pretty darn good yield on oats for this upcoming season uh we still got to go ahead and fertilize it one more time but um i did not want to wait until next month and then start to roll it and then finding out i'm damaging my crops and then i got a whole field that i can't roll so why not just get it done this month here and I'll do a small test next month on a corner of the field here and see what happens to the crops. Um, from my understanding, uh, I didn't do much rolling in 22, uh, if you've been following me along since uh, 22 started. I did it once on Elm Creek and I was like, uh, this doesn't seem to be worth it. Uh, but I'm okay to do it here because the fields are so small. But of course, since Elm Creek, and a year later uh, there's plenty of mods out there I've seen some rollers with some pretty ridiculous sizes out there but we're going to give our fields a good roll and then once we get this done we're going to go ahead and sleep out the rest of the day uh, say goodbye to the month of March get to the month of April uh, a couple things we need to do in April which is plant our sorghum and I think our grass fields I'm going to go ahead and make silage bales nothing to sell right away because uh, silage doesn't really sell good until January so we'll just hold on to them until January uh, I also did in between episodes I did find a trailer for transporting pallets and bales around um, currently right now I don't have enough cash to buy it if I wanted to it's gonna be like 17 grand for it so uh, we're gonna have to wait until we sell our fabric in the month of May which is coming relatively quick we'll probably fertilize this field after the first growth stage as well next month see how it goes I thought about using the doits uh, for hauling around the roller but I was checking the specs on it the roller needs 60 horsepower the doits is a 52 horsepower tractor it probably could roll it on around the field uh, but let's be honest uh, manual transmission probably be hard, hard to find the right gear and be a lot of slow speeds and uh, maybe not even getting up the hill at all so oh this will even roll when it's going backwards I mean yeah of course it will roll when it goes backwards but some equipment in farming simulator when you go backwards it doesn't really do anything it has to be going forwards Like I said, rolling is something um, where I live, I, farmers just don't do it. Um, I did talk to one farmer and he says, uh, for what we do for crops around here, in his opinion, is not worth it. Uh, mostly where I am, it's corn and soybean. And that's pretty much about it. They said, yeah, rolling just doesn't, uh, we don't need it that much around here. One thing I do have to be careful of, as we can see, the grass at the edge of the field, when I roll onto that, the grass disappears. But I'm going to be curious to see next month when I come to the corner of the field here and I roll it. Does it destroy the crop? We're going to find out. Some of you probably already know, but I don't have a clue. This field is oddly shaped, but trying to get the most out of the field that we possibly can. And plus, this is uh, one field from four. Or was it five fields? One, two, three. No, I think it was just four fields. So 
so May should be a good month for us. That's when we're going to sell the fabric, I think. At least that's the market time for it. Uh, middle of summer is when the planks should be sold. And two of our greenhouses right now are currently producing strawberries that are being sold. So we're actually selling product for the first time here in a half year on this farm. Now we did sell the Fent 718 a couple months ago, so that was a good amount of money that came in. But then again, you can also look at it as a loss because I paid 180,000 for it and I only got 150 back for it. But it helped us out buying more land and getting more stuff, uh, upgrading the spinnery as well, so. And it seems everyone's liking the Fiat that we have here. Like I said, nothing wrong with the fence. Just uh, it was just too modern for the uh, the area that we're in. Apparently, I did see there's another another uh, fence. Oh, sorry, not another fence. Another Fiat. Uh, I saw on the test for mods on the Giant Swarm something like a the Gold Edition, the 1300D Gold Edition. I think it said. Must be a very popular tractor because there's a lot of 1300 Fiat models out there. Or mods. It's all the same model, but different mods out there for the 1300. I'm going to have to double check on the baler that we have because if I'm going to make silage bales, i got to be careful of what size bale I have it on because I think the wrapper on that one there can go up to 150. It can't do the 180s that we've been making. Time we start uh, bringing some cash here soon. I mean, it's all going to work out. We got most of the equipment that we need, anyways. So we're all set there. It's just a matter of being able to pay off that $7,000 a month for interest, uh, the horse helper all that and then uh, if we can slowly start paying off that loan at the same time that'd be nice but eventually we are going to buy the hundred thousand dollar training facility for the horses and i'm going to have to buy another animal trailer that can pick up the trained horses for them to be sold kind of nice though that I found a roller that can do a grass field and soil now I was thinking um, cause I'm, I was waiting for someone to say it but no one has said it yet about uh, other sheds to park our equipment into and I said, well, we can buy the land where the beehives are because it's got a shed there. I mean, technically, I could just go in there and park my tractors there anyways. <laughs> it's not like I can't go onto the property and just park my stuff there. But I think it would be just uh, the right way if we go ahead and buy the property and park our equipment where the sheds are. Land around here is not that expensive, just that we're we're out of cash. The banks over here in Salender don't want to have me borrow any more cash. If you remember originally I didn't want to go over a million and we hit 1.5 million. It is amazing when you think about it every time you probably start a farm, it's like Oh, I got, uh, you know, $750,000. That's enough to buy a few pieces of equipment that we need. And then you start buying stuff, then you realize, okay, $750,000 won't cover. It's always, at least for me anyways, it always seems to be a bit more than what you think it's going to be. But I'm no stranger for taking out big debts and uh, 
have fun trying to pay him off. I'll probably just leave the roller right on the Fiat right here and just do it first thing in the morning in April because I just want to see if it will destroy the crops. I mean, I would think it would. But sometimes things surprise me. Now I'm going to go ahead and just park the Fiat right here. All right, and uh, let me double check on the animals because I kind of forgot the state that they were in, but I'm pretty sure everything is going to be fine. Uh, yeah, they're fine. They're still doing okay. I'm, I'm hoping we can get uh, to the harvest season on these six horses the amount of food we have. I think we were somewhere on the total capacity of food, like right about here with the six horses. We'll only, only get down a little bit. So I think we're going to be fine on that. Uh, production buildings, the sawmill is going to be doing nothing. Let me hide inactive. Yeah, the sawmill is kind of dead in the water. So we got two making cotton and two making strawberries. Uh, let's see here. We're, we're just say 56,000. So I'll be kind of interested to see if two greenhouses and the spinnery at level three, uh, what that does. Uh, wait a minute. Is we got plenty of room in the spinnery? Yeah, I can hold another 13,000 or 12,000 liters. It's not going to make 12,000. If it makes 12,000 liters overnight, I'll be extremely happy with that. Um, our grass field should be ready in the morning. I mean, I will check the store page. Not that I can really... I mean, I'm only looking for, like, the trailer, I think. For bringing around the pallets and also bales, if we so desire. Um, yeah, we are all set here. Let's go ahead and just sleep through the night. 8 o'clock in the morning would be good. Our oats, hopefully, have uh, sprung to life in that field. I was going to say, oh, it's going to be raining first thing in the morning. All right, yeah, so about, uh, you know, we're losing about six grand a night, so it's not as much as I thought it was, but six grand is still six grand. Grass field is ready, which is good. Uh, the one thing I haven't tested out yet on the Fiat, we did go ahead and put the linkage in the front. I haven't tested to make sure it works on the mower, but hopefully it does. There's our oat field has sprung to life so I'm just gonna go ahead and test this little corner here put the roller down so it doesn't hurt the crop at all so you can roll the field after the crops have grown okay I would have thought because when you roll the grass field if I were to go over to the grass field and roll it um, it would destroy it well not destroy it but it'll bring it right back to, like, if you harvested the field. So I thought I was going to do the same thing with the crops. All right, so, uh, you know, I learned something there. Maybe you learned something, too. I don't know. Uh, but if you didn't know, now we all know. All right, let's go ahead and put the roller away. Um, actually, before I cut the grass, I want to think about this a little bit more. Boy, that is bumpy there. I definitely I think we need to get some landscaping done there. I thought it was going to be fun in the beginning, like, oh, let's have these bumps here and there. But, um... Yeah, that, that would that could uh, damage some wheel bearings and all that kind of stuff on a tractor and our equipment so maybe not be a good idea to have all those bumps around here put that down and down oh yeah so the so the spinnery let's, let's see how that did 56,000 all right so two greenhouses are almost equal with the spinnery so that, that's good um, I don't know how much did we sell in strawberries yesterday I mean, we turned it on middle of the day. So, sold products. I didn't sell anything that I know of, so that's got to be all strawberries. That was like midday, and you can already see it's only, only 8 o'clock in the morning. So, we're going to get about $3,000 a day from the strawberries from the greenhouses. So, that's not too bad. Um, oh, yeah, on the store page here, anything of interest? Some people said they wouldn't mind seeing me cultivating once in a while. Uh, but I do want to save up on the cash right now. Uh, maybe in the future. We'll see here. I'm not too sure. Don't hold me to it. 
right, let's back on up here. Uh, I want to go ahead and get the oats put in. Uh, sorry, not the oats, the sorghum put in. Let's see, that's canola. Sorghum right there. Make our horses nice and happy. Uh, let's try to avoid the bumps if we can. I also been told, and uh, it'd be kind of interesting to see, not for here, but definitely for East Vineland, I got that uh, Devourer tree mod that we're going to use to uh, tear up the stumps here, and I did not put the chute on it. I've been told, um, even without the chute, if I were to have a trailer nearby, it's going to empty into a trailer with the Tree Devourer mod. It's $100,000 for the chute, but you really don't need it, I guess. So that's one way to get rid of the wood chips. Here we don't have any, I haven't even used it yet, but we got plenty of stumps to go ahead and tear on up. Right, over the river and through the woods. And we should be good to go. I think I got enough seed and fertilizer for this field here, or fields. Come on, Fiat. I know you can do it. You should have no problem with this. So as I've been talking about, since this is our first time really over here doing some farm work, uh, all these fields over here I do want to go ahead and purchase in the long run. And probably always plant sorghum over here, or once we get a good surplus of food for the horses, we can always go ahead and uh, change up crops and start putting down other types of crops for like the first year or two. It's probably going to be basically sorghum and oats being put down. And the reason why I want the sorghum down over here and the oats down or over by the farm is because of the straw situation. Uh, that way I can make straw bales over there and don't have that far to transport them and maneuver them around. Kind of nice that the farmer who had these uh, fields, wherever they were, took care of them rather well. They don't need to be plowed. They don't need to be... Uh, Lined, but of course fertilizer we are putting down one stage we'll have to come back around after the crop grows and uh, give it a good second stage and now that I know that I can roll the field after the crops grow I don't have to rush over here with a roller to get it done today well I should say state this though because now I, there's still one thing I don't know um, the roller will not destroy the crops after they grow but does it count it as being rolled maybe you can't roll it after the crops grow maybe it doesn't take effect because you're rolling the field basically to help the seeds get more uh, soil and moisture around it so you're compacting the seed in a little bit but after the crop has grown, I don't know if it really helps it out that much more because it's already starting to grow. Yeah, I'm just thinking in the future when we do own all these fields, if I were to make it all one field, which I don't think I will, it will definitely help out having this uh, seed drill right here. Right now, we're going to get the work done rather quickly, but in about three or four years' time here in Solyndra, we might own most of these fields over here, and it may take me quite a while to get the work done. Yeah. <laughs> 
Still thinking about those uh, open air gardens that we put down. And I was thinking that day when we put them down, put them down like, how about if we upgrade these things so we can push out the cotton? And the workers at the spinnery going, no, 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 we're, we're fine, we're good. We're good, sir. <laughs> now I got the spinnery working triple time and they can just barely keep up with two greenhouses. I also mentioned uh, last episode about how noisy this tractor is and um, I can see the comments coming in like, oh, the tractor sounds great and no, it's not too loud. Well, the one thing I do in editing is I turn the volume down <laughs> when I'm driving this tractor. So if I didn't turn it down, you probably wouldn't even be able to hear me talk, which could be a good thing. Um, drown me out a little bit or out completely. All right, so we are all set over here. Gonna be doing a lot better and more secure for those six horses when fall comes. We, we just harvested three fields, no, uh, four fields last year, which is the one that we made, uh, the one we got the oats in. And that so far is being good enough. But eventually, we're going to have 16 horses in there. And we're also going to have to feed the horses in the training facility. It's like having, like, two horse stables. Ah, the one thing I kind of forgot to look at, though, just realized, is a pressure washer type system for washing off the vehicles. I have an idea what I like to use. I'm going to check the price on the fabric, because this is our first spring here. Oh, I keep forgetting about these bumps. How can you keep forgetting about the bumps? They're everywhere, and they're massive. I know, I just keep forgetting about them. Um, being our first spring here, and we're going by the price guide saying May is the best time to sell it. It could be right now. We do have a good amount of fabric sitting there, and that would be almost $4,000 per 1000 I think the max price it said uh, was like 3800 And last I knew, we had about nine, 9,000 liters. So that's, uh, that's a good amount. Um, all right, I got to grab the tether, even though I don't want to use the tether. Just got to move it on over. Now I'm going to find out if this three-point linkage in the front does work with the mower. I mean, it looks like it will, but... Still going to put the mower on the front. Actually, it wouldn't work on the back. Will it? I know there's a couple modded ones in 19 that would. Used to be able to put it behind the butterfly mower. Used to work out great. Well, the good thing is the mower attached to the Fiat. And we should get a decent yield off the field because, well... It's, is that 100%? No, uh, it's at 98%. That's right. Because I was wondering where the extra 2% comes from or, or where it went. And someone said, well, you didn't mulch the field. I'm like, ah, good point. That's the other 2%. You know, I'm wondering, to save myself the trouble, what if this... Uh, can handle the mower and the baler at the same time. Or 
One way to find out is to uh, go ahead and grab it. But let me go ahead in the page here. Uh, yeah, so it can only wrap up to 150 centimeters. All right. Let's back on in here, grab the baler, and let's see if this has got enough juice to run both. Oh, well, look at this. It's got the same problem as I had before. Now it won't go forward or backwards again. Has anyone else had this problem with the Fiat? Well, if you ever do have that problem, the only way I know how to correct it is to go ahead and reset it. And it works fine. Um... But if the problem persists for me, we're going to have to get rid of the Fiat, unfortunately. It happened the first day I got it, and it hasn't happened since until, well, right now. Uh, this gate is closed. Oh, yeah, I better go ahead and change this to 150. Now, the first bail is still going to be at 180, so it probably... Well, it's not going to wrap it. No, hit the wrong button. And turn on the bailer. Well, so far she's moving forward. I don't have the mower on yet, though. Well, she can do it, um, but it's, it's pulling it down, meaning I think the working speed is 10 miles an hour, minimum for the baler. I think the mower is a little bit faster. doesn't like uh, trying to go around a curve. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be working out too well for us. So, um, let's go ahead and drop the baler off here. Because that's just going to take way, way too much time. Where do I want to park this for now? I mean, right here is a good spot. Over to the side. There we go. So at this point, I might as well go ahead and windrow it as well. Just make it a little bit easier. But it's one of those things you don't know if you don't try. It's kind of like on East Violin, the Class Arion. Um, kind of the same thing. Had the front mower and the Kubota baler behind it. On flat ground, once it got up to speed, it was okay. Um, going uphill, yeah, I just didn't want to do it, so... Yeah, I'm definitely thinking uh, both grass fields here, we're going to go ahead and make silage bales. Um, we got a decent amount of hay bales over at the sheep's pen. And that can get us by easily. Uh, we'll be able to cut the grass again. I'm actually surprised we're cutting this grass in April. But uh, that means we'll be able to cut it up again in May, June, and July. And by then, we may have another... 26 sheep. 
But, uh, yeah, we also got, I think, a couple of hay bales in the horse paddock as well. So I think we're good in that sense. Well, it's just going to be me going around th this field here a few times, and then uh, I might as well go ahead and cut the other grass as well. Then we'll get the windrower out, make uh, some good swaths for it. Then we'll hook up to the baler, and like I said, make some uh, wonderful silage bales. And then th now the next thing is, um, where do I put them afterwards? Um, you may think, how about put them in there? i got to be kind of careful. That little spot right in front of that uh, brown building, and between those bales, that's where we sell the bales. So if I were to drive in there to, to store them, I think they would sell. And not as silage bales, they would sell as grass bales. So, uh, yeah, I gotta find some place to park those on up. Jesse was born on a winter's night in the middle of the storm. The road was blocked, so Jesse was born in this old house. Raised on love in those sunny years when there was magic in the world. Her laughter traveled well across those hardwood floors. God knows we didn't have much. But in a way, you know we had it all. She grew up fast in a breath or two. She was on her way out the door. While her clothes were dried on a line outside the porch. With that worn out truck and a lot of hope, she left one Thursday morning. Making three swaths into one, so that's going to save me a little time in bailing. Not that I need to save any time. We got plenty of time here in Solyndra. With the fields as uh, the size as they are, I don't need hours on end to harvest a couple fields or take care of a couple fields, which is rather nice. And um, yeah, I don't think we're going to be really calling upon Frank and Francine and Frank Jr. too much in this series. But then again, you never know. Um, you never know when you're going to need a little bit of help. Although I can't see myself needing too much here. Maybe in a couple years when we own those fields all on the other side. If I make just two fields over there, I can have uh, one of them working in a field. Planting. Or whatever while I'm you know, rolling a field or something like that. Now, someone did mention as well, um, we could do pigs on this map because of the pig sty that's over there. Um, but we're going to definitely pass on that because I'm doing um, the pigs on East Violin, which has been a little problematic with the, the meat production building. Um, so, yeah, if I were to buy that property, which eventually I'm pretty sure I'm going to, It'll be just for the sheds and maybe put a couple more beehives down. It'll be just like a, a, a bigger garage area, if you will. Because by the time I sell the pig pen, I'll have room to maybe park the harvester over there. I turned rather quickly. Although I'm getting a little nervous every time I stop with the Fiat to change directions. Because that's when it seems to... Like the gearbox is like locking up on me and it won't let me go forward or backwards. If you had that problem at all with any tractor, uh, you know, let me know if it's a modded tractor, this is a modded tractor, um, or you're having trouble with the base game one uh, as well, maybe, let me know. If no one's had the problem, then I could just say it just has something to do with this mod. But, you know, why would it do it just once in a while and all of a sudden then, it, you know, just works fine for a couple days and all of a sudden it'll start acting up again. I, I don't know. 
Alright, let me just double check on the setting. Should be at 150, which it is. Um, automatic dropping is on. It's going to be. Now, don't be surprised if the first fail doesn't wrap because that might be a 150. If it is, it's going to kind of suck. And it's a one, it's a, it's a 180. So, um, so that's a grass fail. I can feed that to the sheet. That's not a problem. I say that. Um, do they take? Uh, I mean, some pens just take hay only. So that let's see, which one is that one here? Is it this one here? So they take grass and hay. I think that's the pen I put down, the 195. And the horses. Horses are only going to take hay. I'm pretty sure of that. If I only knew what pen I put down. <laughs> yeah, I put that one down. They only take hay. Uh, but that grass bale we just made, which is good, I can feed that to the sheep. That sheep pen will take grass. I think it was in 19 I had a sheep pen that only took hay, didn't take grass at all. Now this one should wrap. There we go. Looks like you better wrap. Now I can't see how many bales we got this field and say, yeah, the, the yield did increase quite a bit. Uh, because obviously last year we were doing 180 centimeter bales and these are going to be 150 so yeah we're, we should make more bales but we should make more bales in both senses of the yield should be better <laughs> and they're smaller so that warning goes off quite a bit in advance but if the swaths were bigger I would need a further advance warning. I'm kind of curious, how big are the 150 bales here? 5,300, so not that big. I was kind of getting used to the East Vineland map to where the bales um, are a lot... Uh, they, they're not a lot bigger in size, but the... The capacity is a lot bigger. Still unsure where to put these silage bales for now. I guess I can turn on the uh, zone marker to see where that cell point is there and still put them in that general area. I think we actually own that area when we bought the outskirts of the map. For zero dollars, we got the. Well, I can put it in the sawmill to be safe. Uh, maybe that's where I'll put them. Got plenty of room in the sawmill area. But I would like to kind of leave them here, but I need to roll the field. Okay, I can come up with another few liters here, right? go so for silence bales we got two four six eight nine it's not too bad And then we'll see how we're doing um, the rest of the year. We'll see how much we're going through on the hay bales. If we're not really going through them, maybe I'll make some more silage bales again. But I don't see myself making uh, three cuts in a year for silage bales.
Okay, I need a... Well, this, you know, that shed does actually cover up that quite a bit. Let me just check the map here. I want to see if we actually own that property that's in there. All right, we do. Um, but I think I, I'm just going to do it to be on the safe side. Put it in here. Let me jump over this here for a second. I do believe this is a sell point for the, the bales. Livestock market. Okay. And the bales go... To who? Well, they can either go to the livestock market uh, or up to the farmer's shop. Okay. Uh, the other thing I need to double check is, uh, I know it's a long ways off still, trained horses. Do I got a place? Oh, the farm shop will take the trained horses, so I don't have to put down the special sell point for that. Oh, good. Um, so we're all set there. I checked out on the map. I didn't check it on this one. Uh, yes, yeah, so where is that uh, sell point in here in case I decide to bring it in here? But I think I'm better off putting in here. Yeah, this, so this is where it sells, right in front of the bales. I, but I don't know how big the trigger is. So if I wanted to stack the bales over here, I don't know if I cut cut across here if it'll take him. So I think it'll be better off if I just put it into the sawmill area. Since we own it, I can just uh, stack them right over there. Um, I will have to do it, though, with just the telehandler for now. Only because we don't have the trailer. The trailer's going to be about 17 grand. And the other thing I want to check on, we can turn that back off, is the price currently for fabric. Next month should be the best month for it. Uh, 38, 39, 20. I think we'll be selling the fabric at the beginning of the next episode. How about that? Um... So wait, how many pallets we got here? We got five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we got 13,000 liters at, we'll just say $4,000. So $62,000 worth of fabric sitting there. That is going to be nice. Um, so I'll probably sell the fabric with the telehandler. And then once we get enough, and I will show you the trailer that we're getting. Uh, it's actually under bailing trailers. This is on the Giants Mod Hub, by the way. If we scroll on down, it's called the Homemade Bale Trailer right there. I know it says 15000 but of course we got to go with the BKT tires. And it's going to charge me $2,000 extra for the standard. I'm going to go with the wide tires, and I'm probably going to repaint it instead of just having a black and white. And of course, since we got the color mod, um, I can just go ahead and click on change that color of black any color I want. It won't be extra charge for the paint. And then uh, we can load it on there. Uh, the picture, I haven't tried it yet, but the picture does show uh, bales on it and also shows pallets on it with straps going over it. So I know there's straps and that's going to be kind of keen for around here for how bumpy the roads are. But yeah, beginning, beginning of the next episode, we'll go ahead and sell these uh, fabric, uh, I was going to call them sheets, but they're just plain old fabrics. And uh, bring in a whole bunch of cash. And then, um, yeah, then we can go around, pick up the silage bales, put those away on the trailer. And then we got to roll the grass field. Um, I got to roll it today because if I wait a day and then roll it, it'll reset the grass back to this stage here. So if I do it, I'll, I'll lose a month of growing on the grass. And then, of course, at that point, I might as well go over and roll the sorghum field as well. Uh, but everything else is looking really, really good here. And with the extra money we get, uh, probably pay off a little bit of the loan. I'm, I'm not going to buy any property this year, I think. Um, but, um, you know, I, I really, I, I have ideas here, not plans because I make a plan and I change it in five minutes. Uh, but yeah, I want to buy a, a, buy a pressure washer as well. We got to clean up our equipment once in a while. And, uh, let me know if you had any problems with any of the tractors, uh, of all of a sudden where the tractor just won't go forward or backwards. Uh, it's my first experience having that, um, with this tractor anyways, uh, don't know. So if you have any ideas or, you know. Hopefully it doesn't, I, I think it's going to happen again, but if it only happens once in a great while, I'll just reset it and, and deal with it. Um, but if it happens a lot, then uh, yeah, we'll have to look at other options. But anyways, that's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. I'll catch you again right here in Solendra. But until then, have a good one.